Hi guys, Hatch Crammick again. So I hope you're doing well and enjoying your day so far in the wake of Optic 6 series of the year against Atlanta Phase. Lots of reaction from the Optic guys, especially to the manner in which they went down at the end saying yes, they were expanding their map pool, but that's no excuse for throwing away some of the advantages that they squandered during the series. Very much enjoyed to your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always, I greatly appreciate it. First of all, this is 6 star. We saw it played a lot this past weekend. To great effect actually. Yes, there are some problems. Certainly the spawns over on this P1, P2 rotation there are some interesting things that happen. I mean, look at this blue arrow here, just spawning in the back. It's not great, but um, look, you can design a map as well as you like. If the spawns don't work properly, there are always going to be problems. Is it better to watch and probably to play? Most certainly than some of the maps we've had on the CD lately, yes. Is it a shame that Invasion Control is still in? Yes, but it is what it is. And actually, as Hixie says, they will be, we believe, changing the water hill on that map. I wonder if Optic actually want it changed, because if there's any man in the entire league that that I would trust to be in the water. It's, you know, Shark Sea. People have been calling him, and he actually did really well on that hill yesterday in that series against FaZe. So I wonder if Optic could decide whether to keep or get rid of the water hill, whether they would do so. But um, the developers, we believe, have said that, yeah, they will change it to somewhere else. Question is whether they do change the water hill. Does it get any better? Does the map change? Does the map get, you know, worse somehow? Because we saw with Karachi, they changed the rotations but I don't really think there was much reason to do so. And I think that map plays worse now than it did before. So I don't know if they'll say, you know what, right, we'll get rid of the water hill. But we're also going to change this, that and the other. And the game actually doesn't play as well anymore. I don't know. But um, yes, yeah, so that's what Hixie says. The water hill has to go. Or they've got to change how the gunplay works. Because, yeah, shooting gunfights in water are a mess. And as Envoy says, no muzzle hurts it bad in the water. But the pistol might just be the best gun. And that seemingly is the thing to use. But speaking of six star... Optic got the win yesterday on that game one against FaZe, and honestly, FaZe, sure, they're FaZe. They played well this series, but I don't think this is the best series you're ever going to see from FaZe. Like, I don't think any of their individuals, apart from Simp at times, played extraordinarily well, and that's why I think from my side, this is another frustrating loss for Optic, because again, they had phenomenal performances yesterday from Dashi, from Shotzi. Their win conditions actually delivered on what they require to beat a team like FaZe, but yet they still somehow didn't win. So we're going to discuss exactly how. Of course, there was the talk in the control. The search and destroy as well, they arguably should have won. Going into it, though, you look at the map pool, you think, all right, high-rise search, high-rise control, Rio Harpoint. Optica clearly playing around here on some of FaZe's good maps to try and improve at them, which is not a bad idea. And if you look at the series, if you just look at the overall numbers in the series, you say, you know what? Fair play optic made it close on phases map picks or phases good maps and it was a very competitive series They went down 3-1 But when you actually watch the series it paints a different picture in terms of the way they got to those defeats and the advantages that they had and couldn't capitalize on that round two of the controller was another example 10-4 it always frustrates me actually when teams even with an advantage they just love to get off the point. And I don't know what it is. I know this was talked about as well. And the Optic guys actually discussed it. Like the play that Shotzi made. The play that Pred made. But I feel like you see this quite often. Where teams are close to winning. They nearly have the capture in. And they think alright. We've got time. Let's just get off the point. Play for kills. But it almost always tends to backfire. Because every second on the clock counts. And I think Ravens used to do this a lot. They'd have like on this map actually high rise. They'd have like two minutes left to capture a point. And they'd be like well we can spend a minute just playing for kills all of a sudden they have like 50 seconds left on the clock and they're like, okay, okay hang on actually you have to get on the point now and then they get a bit frantic they get caught staggering and all of a sudden it goes wrong like i feel like when you've got 45 50 seconds on the clock you just want to get on that thing and stop the timer right because if you stop the timer it makes the defense um you know panic somewhat as it's getting closer and closer and even when you've got a kill lead that can disappear quite rapidly when the clock starts ticking down because at the end of this round of course Optic had what I think they got phased down to three or two lives but there was three or two seconds on the clock so it didn't matter in the end so 
I think that Optic should have capitalized on that situation better. They use their streaks as well for no avail in that case. And the final map of the series again was down to the wire. Also, though, it got to be said, a similar trend here on this map than we saw back at the Major when Optic would start slow, right? Because it was the same thing again. And I don't really blame them. It started a bit slow after the way that they lost the control. I honestly thought the FaZe were going to run away with this after seemingly having won the mental battle after that control. But so Optic went down this game you know 60 70 points we saw that before at the major plenty of times when they would go down big to phase they then bring it back against phase but it was i wouldn't don't want to say too little too late because they definitely could have won but it's just you can't go down 60 70 80 points to phase and expect to bring it back every time and there have been multiple times they have brought it back but yet phase will win in the last 10 seconds and that is of course what happened again draza here he is you know the ceo of optic dressed up nicely in the suit and yeah okay 0.91 series is KD, but it's not about the numbers really in terms of the KD or anything. It's about the record that he has over Optic this year. There was also this that Abizi confirmed to Scump and Methods that I think he said in a tweet that he had a migraine, but he said, yeah, like he wasn't feeling great at all. So a bit of a flu game against the Optic guys. So it's like, you know, Optic had everything going for them, I think, yesterday to win this series, and yet they still couldn't. We look at some of the numbers. Dash had a 1.3, you know, phenomenal damage. Shotzi had 104 kills. You look at this scoreboard and you think, how did they find a way to lose this series, right? Because, you know, we've seen Dashi. He didn't play well against FaZe back at the Major. That's actually been his bogey series of the year so far. He fried yesterday, despite the, you know, supposedly unfavorable AR meta that I'm not so convinced by. But whatever. Kenny had a solid series, you know, 18,000 damage. Still probably needs to improve Kenny in his search and destroy, but I think that's acceptable. Shotzi, 104 kills. So much impact, so many engagements. But Pred, you know, 18 and 88. Now, I'm not going to lie. When I saw these numbers, I was like, how did Pred have a 1KD? It didn't feel to me that he had a 1KD. I didn't feel like the impact was there. But uh, yeah, lowest damage on his team. Actually higher than Abizi, who had a pretty rough day because he wasn't feeling great. And Selium didn't drop a 1.3. Simp didn't have a monster series. So the issue that Optic have had at the Major and previously was that they would just get out slayed. Like, that was the issue that Optic had. They would keep the games close against FaZe, but they would get out slayed. And FaZe, you know, Simp would drop a 1.2 against them. Dash would have a 0.8. That is what's happened, let's say, back at Major 2. This time, though, they do outslay, but yet they still don't win. So that's the issue for Optic is, is like, is this, you know, at this point, a mental problem? Because how can you have your win conditions execute? FaZe don't even have their win conditions execute, really. But yet somehow they win the series. I mean, that's just throwing away advantages. That's what that is. And this is the record in Hardpoint so far this season. So with the exception of a couple early on that Optic won, every other game has gone pretty much FaZe's way, but in a very close fashion. Like, I mean, honestly, it's a banger, right? From a neutral's perspective, it's phenomenal to watch because Optic versus FaZe delivers great series. And banger maps like every single time. But pretty much every map they've played in Hardpoint, with the exception of two, has gone at least 200-200. And the last several, 250, 237, 237, 224, 227, 207, then 241. But of course, most of those have gone to FaZe in recent times. And now on the season, it's 6-0 to zero on the year. That actually ties up as well I think the all-time CDL record between FaZe and Optic at 12 to 12 because Optic were dominating their head-to-head -head not long ago now it's a very different story and you've got to think that maybe Draza has had something to do with that because yeah Optic versus FaZe over the years was 0 in 5 one way and now to 6 and 0 the other way how many more times will Optic and FaZe play this year I think they play in one more set of qualifiers well actually there's only one more set of qualifiers to play right I think they play next qualifiers they of course have major three they could theoretically play twice at major three they could theoretically play twice at major four and at the world championship so i'm hoping that we get at least another four to five optic phase matches this season and i still think arguably optic would beat any team right now that isn't phase but maybe with the new maps that's going to change that was certainly the case at major two that may not necessarily be the case anymore with certainly toronto looking to have a bit of a step back so phases win streak improves to six draza's win streak by the way against optic improves to nine in a row so in the last nine matches basically in the last year it's been over a year now since optic has beaten draza which is pretty absurd stats 
you know, this guy might just straight up be the CEO. And this, of course, does become Optic's longest ever losing streak versus one team at six in a row. So some of the reaction here from the Optic guys, of course, Draza had his worst to say after the series, you know, too icy, he says. But of course, he also knows that, sure, we're going to go to LAN and we've got to get the job done again. But the question is, how did Optic go from a situation where, sure, they were expanding map pool and that's what shots he's going to stay but still losing the series. As Kenny says, feel like we played pretty well, but just got to get better communication-wise. So in those key moments, and it honestly does look like this sometimes, Optic get to 230. They get to four rounds, maybe five rounds in Search and Destroy. They get to, you know, a good life lead and control. And then the brains just like switch off to some level. Like, I think honestly, it was a good example. Up 2-0 in the Search and Destroy. Up 2-0, they get gifted a first blood because Selium kills Simp somehow. And then it's a four versus three, they lose the round. It's like, sure, they won other rounds, they still made it competitive, but it's rounds like that that, like, the real top teams that win events, they just don't lose those rounds. And as Dashi says, yeah, GG's phase, lost 1-3, trolled the hell out of that series. And Dashi must be annoyed, right? And Shotzi must be annoyed, because he's sitting there thinking, bloody hell, like, I just dropped a 1.3 today, and we couldn't win? Like, what's going on? So I think a lot of the discussion now has come to print, and this is actually very interesting to me, that going into the season... You know, if I had to predict when Optic were to lose, who the scapegoat was going to be. And to be fair, scapegoat kind of implies, you know, someone that hasn't really done anything wrong, but is getting unfairly blamed. And maybe that's not even the case here. But you know how it goes with Optic, right? When you know, the team loses, usually there's one person or player that takes the blame. It was Karma back in the day with the Optic Dynasty. Sometimes it's even the coach of the team. But now it's actually Pred. I thought probably going into the season, Kenny is the most likely one because he's new to the team, new to the green wall. But, you know, Pred is getting, maybe understandably, a lot of criticism for his play, certainly against FaZe. Because Shotzi's out there flying around, man. This guy's doing it all. And yet, you know, it goes, you know, they call him optic prone sometimes, right? Because he's laying in corners. But also, I think FaZe know how he plays. So if they're missing Pred, they know they ain't challenging him. He's going to be, you know, laying down. And he's going to wait for Shotzi to fly around the corner. Then he's going to go. And maybe that's fine. But there is an argument that that play style in this game, team with Shotzi, just doesn't work quite well enough. So I think his response is good, though. You know, need to close out those winning situations. But, like, he had a 1.0 KD, but it certainly didn't feel like he did. I didn't even notice his presence much on the map, I'm not going to lie, yesterday. And especially when Abizi and Simp don't have the best series they're going to have, right? Because they played phenomenally at the Major. And this is what Dashi said after the Major. He was like, look, Simp and Abizi had those unreal series. That's probably not going to happen again. We're going to be in prime position to capitalise. Simp and Abizi didn't have those dominant series really yesterday and yet when Optic could have capitalized they didn't so I think it is a concern but yes at the end of the day they did play maps that FaZe are good at so you can look at it from both angles but it's like 0-6 oh, it is pretty ugly and you have to look at some of the trends at that point so as Shotzi says good series to test out our map pool we'll bounce back next week so it's kind of like I don't want to say he's making an excuse but he is saying like, yeah, okay, GG's phase lost 3-1, tough, but we were expanding map pool to some degree. But I think JP Krez actually shuts that down. I think it was good to see from JP. He's like, look, GG's phase, they capitalize on our mistakes. Expanding our map pool is not an excuse. Like, we've got to win those maps in those situations, right? And this is a good point because, look, when you play phase, if you want to win an event, you've probably got to beat phase. That's just how it is at the moment. That's certainly how it was at the most recent event. And you might have to beat phase twice. Like, that is the thing for Optic that's as it stands, it's not necessarily going to be a Cold War year, again, where FaZe absolutely crush it. There is a good chance that New York or Toronto can knock FaZe out of an event. But if you do want to win an event, you've probably got to beat FaZe, and doing so in a best of seven, let's say in the finals, is going to take playing some maps they are good on. So when you get the chances, you've got to take advantage of the chances. So, very much interested in your thoughts in the comment section below. Do you think that ever since this moment here where Cell came up to Pred back at Major 2 and checked him out a little bit, I don't know, is he mentally compromised in this series against FaZe? And uh, FaZe certainly having at the time of their life on social media last night. So, very much interested in your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care. And I'll see you next time. That's him. That's him in here. Let's go, you floppy! Yep, let's go, baby. Let's go, you fucking ugly shit! Let's go, man! What? Dude! No, dude, it's confidence! Yeah, let's go.